Hello, my friend. Okay, so welcome to my channel. We are, this is a special little bonus episode. If you're listening uh, on the podcast or you're watching on YouTube, I'm doing my face. If you're watching on YouTube, um, got my little, my little concealer on. I put my primer on. I thought we would have a quick discussion around International Women's Day. This year especially, I just did a few gigs and I've got a few more engagements this month. This month is really busy for me. And I thought, oh my gosh, what I'm sharing at these events as a speaker, I need to share this on the podcast. I want you to hear about it because I don't know if you'll hear this when you're out and about in your IWD events or if you go to these events or whatever, but it's a message that I share every day. It's not an International Women's Day only message. However, because the world is listening and it is this holiday, I thought, why not share? This is an opportunity where women come together, corporations come together, people are listening to us. And we have, a, we have a chance. So when I get up on stage, I use that chance as if, you know that question, if you had a billboard, what would it say? Like, I'm pretending that I have a microphone to the world and the world is listening right now for women. Like, hello, yes, tell me. And what would I say? And so I'm doing my face. Just real quick, this is not sponsored. Unless y'all want to sponsor me, send me free shit, please. I would love that. Anyway, I do buy my own shit and I talk about what I believe in and what I love. So I use the Refi or Refi, Refi, I don't know how you say it, but Refi Beauty, I love their primer is next level. I also use their concealer, uh, not concealer, their um, bronzer. So anyway, so we're gonna do our face, we're gonna chat. It's gonna be a quick one because I've got some shit to do after this, but I just wanted to talk about International Women's Day this year. And you know, every year when I was doing my research for this uh, day, which I do every year, I just look up different things and see where the stats are because I think it's important that we have some research and understand things. Um, what I found was that apparently 1848 was the first case of women's rights in America. 1848, first ever documented case where we started talking about women's rights. And that's a long time ago, okay? So it's a long time ago. A lot has changed since then, but I really believe, like many of us, that there's so much more to go. There's a long way to go. And so this theme, every year the UN United Nations creates these themes, right? And so this year's theme is about counting her in and investing in her. It's about financial gains for women. Sorry, I'm just doing my neck because y'all, I'll be painting my neck. Do you paint your neck? I have to. Um, and it's basically, basically about women, money, making more money, closing the gender pay gap, how we can do this, how we can count her in, how we can invest in her. And Erica always flips the script on anything that's about outside and makes it inside, meaning count myself in, invest in myself, embrace myself. How do I, how do I flip it to me? Because if I put it out there, I don't own it. So basically I flip it to a way of how I can take responsibility. And my favorite quote of responsibility, my favorite meaning of responsibility and my TEDx talk is about radical responsibility is Dr. Wayne Dyer when he says, Responsibility is your ability to respond. It means that you can respond with ability, response, ability. And it's so powerful because when we respond with ability means we can respond to our life. We can take our power back. We can actually do something about it. If I go, it's because I'm a woman. It's because I'm a Latina. It's because I grew up in the hood. It's because I grew up on food stamps. It's because my husband died. It's because of my trauma. It's because my mom beat me, whatever. It's because of my sexual abuse. I can't respond to that out there. I can't respond to the external. I have to respond to what's going on inside myself. So I go, okay, what about me can I change? What about the way that I'm looking at this, my perspective? What about my own self-reflection? And so <clears throat> how I completely transformed my life was I found radical responsibility and I <laughs> went for it. I was like, oh, I'm responding. Now it doesn't mean it's my fault what happened to me or what's happened to you, but it does mean that I can respond. So if I look at how it's my responsibility, I can shift it. And in, through the lens of International Women's Day, I'm like, where can we respond? How can we respond to what's going on? How do we, can we advance equality? Do you think you can advance equality? I think I can. And I know it's big for me to say that I believe my little self can be a part of advancing equality for women. Yes, I do. Yes, I believe I can, and you can, and we can, and she can, and they can, and all of us can together. And so together we can do it, but individually. I think it's an individual task that will make waves collectively. Now, before we continue, I wanna let you know, I use Estelle, Estee Lauder Double Wear. 
so good. I don't know if your lighting, my lighting is a bit crazy right now. Um, I use Pat McGrath Labs concealer. It is the best concealer in the world. And it's like gooey and ooey and liquidy and amazing. And it's the bomb. And now I got my Ruffy. I need to buy a new one. Actually, I did. And it's on the way from London. It's amazing. Oh, my God. Cream uh, bronzer is the jam. Anyway, so that's what I think. I, I do believe that we can make a difference. I do believe that. And a lot of people are like, yeah, right. It's going to take so much. Do I think it's going to solve all the problems of the world? Individual action? Absolutely not. There's some big shit that needs changing. That needs big stuff to happen. Governmental changes, systematic changes. There's stuff that's going to take forever. However, I think that there's a lot that we can do individually. And until we've all individually turned up, I think that it's silly for me to look outside of myself and wait for someone else to do it and point the finger outwards when I myself am not turned up to 12%. Can you turn yourself up all the way? Is the volume down? Turn the volume all the way up. Crank that shit all the way up and tell me that that difference doesn't get made. But I, I see this in my practice, working with my clients one-on-one. -on -one. I have a small one-on-one -on -one practice. Working with my ladies in my group coaching program, we have a massive program with women from all over the world. I see this day to day inside of my programs and inside of my private practice, how we are half turned up. We're on volume two and we can go volume 50. We can go volume 100 and we're on volume 10. And I'm like, and then we're worried about the things out there. And I'm like, can you turn yourself up? Go all the way as much as you can do individually for your own life. Put your hand up at work. Ask for a pay rise. Leave the shitty job. Leave the shitty relationship. Do something. What can you do? One of the questions that I ask my clients a lot, and if you're in my program or you work with me, you know. What can you do? Yeah, but I can't do that and I can't do this. and I can't. Okay, but what can you do? What can I do? That's a question. What can I do? When you ask yourself that question, you start thinking about solutions. You start thinking about all the options that are available to you. You start thinking about the things that you can do. You start getting into solution mode. And let me tell you, when you're in that mode, so much comes, so much changes because you can do something about it. You're not sitting here waiting or, or feeling like distressed about not being able to do shit. You can actually do something about it. And so, in my talk, I was discussing how there is a lot that I believe we can respond to and how responsibility taking, to me, has to do with International Women's Day. And so how do we take responsibility? Because the reality is no one's coming. Like the hard truth is that nobody is coming. Got my cups. No one's coming to save us. No one's coming to magically do shit. Because it's count her in, nobody's going to deposit money in your bank account. Nobody's doing it. We are outsourcing change. Many of us are outsourcing our wealth. Many of us are outsourcing our results. I'm not outsourcing that shit. I'm not expecting anyone to close the pay gap. I'm not expecting anyone to pay me more money just because the theme says so. I'm not. The only thing I outsource is the bins. My husband takes the bins out. I love him. I'm like, babe, I didn't come here to take the trash out. We're not doing that. That's the only thing I don't, I don't worry about that shit. Outsource that. But I'm not outsourcing my wealth. I'm not outsourcing what I desire. Okay, this highlighter, y'all, is the bomb. Divine Glow. Pat McGrath. The best. McGrath, yes. I like McGraw, which is like the country singer. Anyway, Pat McGrath Labs, the bomb. This highlighter is amazing. Available at Sephora. <laughs> so... I was talking about this and how are we outsourcing it? Do we magically think that because it's International Women's Day that someone out there is going to do something? When someone does something, someone else will do it. Who's going to do it? I don't think anybody else is going to do it. I think we need to do it. And if we commit to doing it, I believe that it's going to make a massive difference. So that was part of my talk this year of me being like, no one's coming to fix, save, rescue, respond, change anything. No one's coming. That's the hard truth. And I said that it's all on you. And I pointed at a lady in the audience and she looked at me like, what? And I was like, don't worry, it's not just you. It's also on her. And I pointed at another lady. And it's on me. And it's on you watching this, listening to me. It's on you. It's on us, right? Like if every single one of us puts it on ourselves to make a difference, how are you gonna show up tomorrow in your office? How are you gonna show up tomorrow in your life? How are you gonna respond to your life when you believe that you're the one that can make the difference? But when we outsource this shit, magically waiting for some shit to change, it's not going to change. Nothing's changing. No one's coming. And that's the, that's the horrible news. 
But I also think it's good news. What is this called? This lipstick is Pillow Talk Matte Revolution Charlotte Tilbury. I like it. It's like a little pinky something. You can't really see. My lighting is not great right now because it's so bright in my office. Anyway, I'm taking you through this whilst I'm doing another thing because it is so Gemini of me to be doing 55,000 things at once. So the point of the story is no one's coming. It's you. You got to do it. And don't underestimate the difference that you can make. And we spoke about um, in Iceland, and I highly recommend you check this out on YouTube. The women in Iceland in 1975 went on this incredible ass protest. Like 90% of Iceland's women protested in 1975. Now, this is no Instagram. There is no TikTok. There was no newsletter email to let anybody know that these ladies were going. And they found that 90% of the women walked out. And it was called Women's Day Out or women's day off, sorry. And they just walked out and they left their work. They left their homes. The partners had to take their kids to work. The women weren't there. They shut down airports. They shut down flights because the stewardess were women. Like a lot happened and a lot changed. And some people go, who cares? Okay, whatever, protest, who gives a shit? Well, what happened was after that, laws changed and they closed their pay gap so significantly. And then they had their first female prime minister, you know, president type of person. And that was the change that the country needed. And so if they hadn't have done that, if they didn't believe that they could make a difference and hit them streets and make a, a scene and speak their truth, the women wouldn't have been empowered to ask for more money and go, this is bullshit. I'm sick of this. So what I'm saying is don't underestimate the power that we have individually as a collective. When we individually stop putting up with bullshit, it's going to make some changes. And so I shared that. And then we spoke a little bit about six ways, six ways that you could count yourself in instead of waiting for someone else to invest in you or waiting for someone else to count you in. How can you count yourself in? And it was really powerful because I really truly believe that when we, when we turn up all the way, the difference that gets made in our lives and the difference that gets made to the bottom line in our bank accounts, the difference that gets made, sorry, I'm just gonna grab something. The difference that, that gets made in our, in our family structure, in the companies that we work in, in the organizations or in our business, if we run a business, is huge. It's a massive difference. And so when you think about, oh, will this even matter? Of course it does. It matters tremendously. And I wanna share with you the six ways that I believe you can count yourself in and what I shared on International Women's Day. And it's now International Women's Day. So happy International Women's Day to you. Um, so we spoke about the six ways. Number one, stop accepting less. This is for those of you that stay in jobs where you know you're undervalued or you keep clients that you know aren't paying their invoices or you stay in a shitty relationship where you know your partner doesn't appreciate you. Stop accepting less. If we ourselves don't know our worth, and don't say, no, I'm out, this isn't okay for me, how will it change? It actually won't. And I've stayed in a job that I've been unhappy in for a very long time, and I've stayed in a relationship where I felt undervalued and underappreciated. And if you have done that, I want you to ask yourself, what part of you told you it was okay to stay there, and why? Did you not have the confidence? Did you not value yourself? Did you not believe in yourself? Did you not think you were worth it? Like, what was it? Because if you can figure that out, what that thing was that kept you there and overcome that, you will stop accepting less. And when you no longer accept less, you're now demanding more, which means you're speaking your truth, you're showing up, you're standing up, oh my God, hello, that's not gonna make a change if every single woman did that, if we all turned up 50%, I think it would make a massive change. Number two, ask for what you want and be prepared to get it. Communicating your needs and asking for what you want is the number one way for you to get a shift in your life, in your business, in your corporate role, in your leadership, in your relationship, in your family structure. Like communication and us speaking and asking and sharing our desire and owning that and then being prepared to get it. Like when women get what they want, do we hold it? What's our capacity to hold the wealth? What's our capacity to hold the money? What's our capacity to go, actually, I built that. Actually, I, I attracted that. High five to me. That was me. So asking for what we want is huge. Honor yourself if you already have attracted something you desire. Honor yourself to go, wow, I did that. Like after my TEDx, I'm going to cry. And then I'm just going to go, man, I'm so proud of you. Like, holy shit, I did this. I attracted it. I wanted it. I got it. And then I did it. It's like these are the things that like we desire. And if we don't take a moment 
it just becomes the next thing. Number three, become more valuable. And I said to the audience, I'm like, don't cancel me. Feminist, don't try to cancel me. I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I don't want you to pay me more because I'm a woman. A woman of color, a woman who grew up in a marginalized community. I don't want you to pay me more because you feel sorry for me or because I'm a woman. I want you to pay me more because I'm the fucking best at what I do. And I'm amazing at what I do and I add value. When you have value in your mind to give the organization, to give that boardroom, to give the company, to give your clients, let's say social media, when you have value to add, but you won't jump on camera because you're worried about what people think about you, you won't put your hand up at work even though you have a great idea that can advance that organization because you're worried about what people think about you, you're not adding value. So why should you get paid more? You're holding value. It's in you, you are valuable, but no one knows it because you're too worried about how you will look. It's like get out of your own way, add value, then you'll get paid more money. We shouldn't get paid more just because we're women. It's like, that's ridiculous. We should get paid more because we're freaking amazing at what we do, the best at what we do. Okay, I love you. Number four, do the inner work. This is the therapist and coach in me speaking. Do the work on yourself. Every single one of us has work to do. I don't care if you don't think you've had big trauma. It's not about big trauma. It's about overcoming the beliefs that tell you that you're not enough. It's about facing your deep wounds and your past experiences that hurt you. The things that messed you up in the past that you were like, man, that was really hard. I had to overcome that grief. I had to overcome that breakup. You know, I was bullied when I was a kid. My mom and dad broke up. What does that mean for me? Many of us don't work on this stuff. And I have this quote in my book that says, if you don't deal with your shit, your shit will deal with you. And for many of us, it's dealing with us in a bad relationship and not having enough money and not feeling good in ourselves. So do the work, like do the work forever. Commit to the work. I better do my mascara. That's what I need to do. I gotta go, y'all. Do the work on you. Number five was clear negative money beliefs. More of the work. Many of us struggle with money. Talking about money, I asked the audience, who here makes a lot of money? Put your hands in the, in the, in the air. Like, get excited about it. I had people go like, little hands, little baby hands. People were so worried about saying, I make a lot of money. And I was like, ladies, if we want to make more money, if we are about counting ourselves in, we need to get comfortable talking about money. We need to get comfortable talking about the fact that we deserve money. We need to talk about money, how much money we want, how much money we're making. Like, let's get comfortable with talking about money. If I didn't know what was possible, this is why I talk about it, I wouldn't be able to make it. I remember listening to Brooke Castillo from the Life Coach School podcast, and she was the first woman that owned the discussion about money. And people were so angry at her. They were like, you're arrogant, you're money hungry, because she was the first woman that I heard owning money. Like she owned it so well as well. I was like, yeah, girl. I wasn't jealous, I was happy for her. I'm like, get your bag. Like, this is great. I uh, highly recommend my friend Janice from Yo Quiero Dinero podcast. Janice has got a book coming out for Latinas um, with money called Financially Lit. Oh, she's amazing, she's my dear friend. She lives in America. She's got a YouTube. I'll link her below as well. Um, Janice is amazing. And she's been on the podcast a few times. Her book is coming out. So she's going to be back on the show next month, I believe, April or May. Um, but yeah, like when we hear other women talk about money, we know it's possible. So clear the money beliefs. Like what are you believing about money? What are your money stories? What have you, what have you uncovered about yourself and your worthiness to charge and investing in you, spending money on yourself? The amount of women that struggle to spend money on themselves Oh my God, let me tell you what. Or like um, not understanding where your money's going. All of that stuff, okay? Your money beliefs are huge. Your money stories are huge. Next one, last one, is be in supportive communities. This is why I talk so much about the sisterhood, not because I want you to join my program. It's not expensive. The program is so accessible. I made the program accessible. Working with me one-on-one -on -one is expensive, but accessibility for my program in the sisterhood, that was the key. I made it accessible so people could actually do it. Because the reality is you need to be around supportive women that are doing the work. You need to be around community so that you feel like you're accountable and you're held and you're guided and you are pushed to the best version of you. And that's what I believe that you can do when you're in supportive communities. Whether it's a networking community, whether it's your church community, whatever feels good for you, whatever floats your boat, like make it happen, do the thing. If you feel like you need a community, especially to work on yourself, highly recommend checking out the sisterhood. I gotta fix my freaking eyes. Oh my God, I look like a raccoon. Anyway, we doing this. Um, and that was it, being in supportive communities. So at the end of the day, that's what I want you to know. The reality is you're the one that you've been waiting for. I think June said that. That was a, a poem from a book that this beautiful lady named June wrote. 
we're the ones that we've been waiting for. Nobody's coming to save us, to rescue us. No one's coming to fix things for women. No one's coming to advance equality. It's got to be us. And we need to start at home. And what can we do every single day? What can we do with our voice? What can we, can we stand up? Can we show up? Can we speak up? Can we ask for what we want? Can we clear the beliefs about ourselves that we're not good enough? Like that shit is what you can control. Focus on what you can control. Yes, there are other things that need changing. I know, I'm aware. Hello, I'm a Latina woman of color. I grew up in a marginalized community with all the abuse, capital T trauma. I get it. I know that there are things that are going to take a long time that require systematic governmental change. But guess what? You can make some changes. And if you wait and if you outsource the damn change, it's not going to happen. So I'm like, turn yourself up all the way. Do everything in your power. And then come back to me and tell me shit doesn't change. It will change. It will change significantly. And if I see you do it, and then I see that's possible, guess what's gonna happen? I'm gonna go, oh, I could do this. And then if you do it, and I see you do it, and then I can do it, and then someone watches me, guess what? That creates a wave of change. So do not underestimate how much change you can make. Just little old you, yes, you can, okay? I love you, I gotta go, have the best week, and I will see you soon.